concept four, last concept of our electricity and magnetism unit. So you're probably wondering where are the magnets? This is where we're going to do a very, very light overview of magnetism because there's so much we could talk about. But the cool thing about magnets is how similar they are um, in terms of magnetic force to electrical force. Um, so that's where it kind of all relates. So magnets, what is magnetism? It's a property of some materials that allows them to give off an attractive or repulsive force. A magnet is just a material that has this, this property, this property magnetism. That get, it has an external magnetic field. So it's going to act just like an external electrical field. It makes it possible to apply a force over a distance just like we saw with um, electric fields. And so this is when you've ever, if you ever held two magnets and you've, you've held them close together but not touching and you can just feel that attraction. You can feel almost that field that's between them. That's what you're feeling there. You're feeling that magnetic force. All magnetic objects have a force between them. And that force, similar to electrical, can be attractive or repulsive. Repulsive. So I just kind of answered my own question. But think about some of the other forces we've learned about this year. Is this similar or different? So we've learned about electrical and gravitational. Remember, a gravitational force is always attractive. Um, electrical force, though, is similar to this in that it can be attractive or repulsive. What's um, fun, um, interesting about magnetic force, though, is the attractive force decreases the farther apart the magnets are, which is just like gravitational force. The farther away, the less the impact. And so that's how magnetic force is as well. In magnetic objects, the force is strongest at the magnetic poles, which are the north and the south ends. Um, that's what we're talking about with those poles. So instead of positive and negative, we got north and we have south here. Magnetic poles cannot be isolated, y'all. So if I take this magnet and I cut it in half, I don't get a south end and I don't get like a south magnet and a north magnet. That doesn't happen. If I cut this magnet in half, it just reorients itself. So I have two smaller magnets now with their south and their north end, the south and the north end, which is pretty interesting. So you can't just isolate the pole because it has to do with kind of these magnetic domains, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So that field that's surrounding magnets, that's that external force that you feel, that's that magnetic field, it's what's given off. And it's strongest at the poles. It allows magnets to apply a force over a distance like we mentioned previously. The strength of the magnetic field is based on the material the magnet is made of. So some materials are stronger than others. And what you may have noticed looking at this picture is that the direction of the field is always north to south. So notice these arrows. It's coming out of the north end and towards the south end, coming into the south end. South end. Same here. Out of the north end and into the south end, which is pretty cool. So... Similar to electrical force and electrical fields, magnetic fields result in a, a force that um, can be attractive or it's repulsive. And just like with electricity, opposites attract and like repel. So if you hold a north pole of a magnet towards a south pole of a magnet, they're going to attract to each other, um, as you can see in both of these diagrams. Whereas if you hold two souths or two norths together, they're going to repel as these diagrams show. And you may have felt that before if you've ever had two horseshoe magnets. And if you orient them one way, they're attractive. And then if you twist one of them the other way, they um, are non-attractive. It's because you, you're experiencing those opposites attracting and then the light charges repelling. Now, totally brief because hopefully you learned way more about this in your earth science class but just have to mention that Earth has its magnetic field. It has like a bar magnet running down the middle. Earth's core is made of various metals. We'll learn about them um, a little bit when we talk about the periodic table and rare Earth um, metals. And the metals within the core are oriented to act almost like a giant bar magnet in Earth. And this is why we have north and south poles. But what's actually interesting in terms of how a compass works, our geographic north pole is actually the south pole on the bar magnet inside Earth. And our geographic south pole 
you know, down by South Africa, that is actually the North Pole of the bar magnet that is in Earth. So when you're using a compass, opposites attract. When it's pointing you north, it's attracted to the South Pole bar of the bar magnet within Earth, which is our geographic north and vice versa. Kind of hurts your brain to think about, but still, I think, super interesting and something worth mentioning. Now, magnetic domains. All atoms, which we learned about, are the particles that make up matter, that are made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. They all have potential to be magnetic due to magnetic properties that electrons have. In elements that are already magnetic, Every atom is behaving like a mini magnet with north and south poles and they're all aligned in the same direction and that's what gives it magnetic properties and allows it to put off a magnetic field. So that's what we would see in a bar magnet. They're all pointed the same direction. Whereas something like a pencil is not magnetic and that's because the magnetic domains that each arrow is representing are not necessarily aligned. So they're not going to have any apparent magnetic properties like we see in this picture. Now, can we make them act magnetic? Well, yes we can. You know, your most whiteboards in many classrooms are magnetic. You have magnets sticking to them. And if you try to stick a paper clip to it, though, it doesn't stick to it. The paper clip's not magnetic. But if you bring a certain you know, horseshoe magnet towards the paper clip, it's all of a sudden magnetic and it's attracted to the horseshoe magnet. So how does that happen? That is something called ferromagnetism. So this is a phenomenon where objects placed in a strong enough magnetic field will become magnetized due to the poles within their atoms aligning, those magnetic domains aligning. So all the E are basically facing and orienting in the same direction. So we could take something, you know, like an iron nail that has noticed these magnetic domains of the electrons, they're not aligned at all and we place them next to a strong enough magnet, they're going to align themselves and they're going to become attracted to the magnet. That's what you see when paper clips all of a sudden become attracted to um, horseshoe magnets when they're not attracted to your magnetic whiteboard because the whiteboard is not a strong enough um, force. So, how does this relate to electricity? Why are these even in the same unit? So moving electric charge, which we know to be current, can actually produce a magnetic field, which is pretty cool. And the way that works is the magnetic field is generated counterclockwise around the direction of the moving electrons. So in my picture, if the current is moving this way, the magnetic field is generated counterclockwise around that current. The stronger the current, the stronger the magnetic field that can be produced. And something that um, connects these two things is call, are called electromagnets. So we can make temporary magnets. They can be made using the presence of strong magnetic fields or even just the presence of current, and that's electromagnets. These are temporary magnets made by placing a piece of metal like iron inside a current-carrying coil of wire. That is a tongue twister, current carrying coil of wire. That current creates a magnetic field. So notice in this first picture, the switch is open. This is an open path, so current is not going to flow. So this, this iron nail is not attracting these paper clips in any way. Now, when I close the switch, current is now flowing. That creates a current which creates a magnetic field which is able to attract the paper clips. So again, switch open, there's no current, thus the nail's not magnetic. Switch close, there is current flowing, the nail can act magnetic. It's an electromagnet. Now, how do we increase the strength? How do we make those electromagnetic, electromagnets stronger? There's two things we can do. First, we can add more loops. So if you see this picture versus this picture, these are tight, more tightly coiled. Thus, this one um, is able to pick up more paper clips than this first picture as you can see here. Tighter coils, so more paper clips. The other way is a stronger current. The stronger the current, the stronger the magnetic field. So here we have two batteries, so we're going to be able to create a greater voltage difference and thus a greater current. And then notice in this picture that the nail is picking up much more paper clips than it is above when there's only one battery, so there's less current. 
So where the heck do these things exist in the real world? Well, they're kind of all over the place, but two I'm going to touch on here, and then we're going to learn a little bit more about in class, are um, generators and motors. So motors are in your car and a bunch of other places, but they are devices that use electromagnets. And what they do is these electromagnets actually convert electrical energy into mechanical energy, into movement. So they're taking your battery and they're taking um, the energy from your battery and creating movement from it in terms of mechanical energy, which we know is all the kinetic and potential energy um, within a system. A generator does the opposite. So it's a device that's using an electromagnet to convert mechanical energy, so movement, using that to create electricity. Maybe you've used this if you've ever been in you know, a storm where your power's gone out and you've had a generator produce electricity for you. That's exactly what it's doing, and it's doing it by using these electromagnets, which is pretty cool. So science in the real world. And now we're going to explore that for ourselves. <laughs>